hello welcome back to my channel this is unique for me again thank you to my subscribers for subscribing thank you for your show of love thank you for your support and also please if you are new here or you're here for the first time or you've been coming and you've not subscribed please can you please press the subscribe button it's that red button just down this video on the right side please just press it to support my channel thank you so much so this is the concluding part of my story and it's not a full story it's just you know a summary of events that i'm just trying to show the background to this um channel so that you can understand me better and then you can just have you know um an overview of things so that you can understand me better okay so um, like I mentioned in the part one, I mentioned that I had two shops, my business was doing fine. I also had an outlet in my cousin's shop um, somewhere in Ikeja and business was fine up to this point, you know, after I just got married. Um, what happened was that a few weeks or so after marriage, I got duped and, um, you know, it just ate into my capital, my business crumbled. Just practically just my business um, suffered for it um, suffered so much that I couldn't sustain the business you know I had to give up the shops I just had um, I even mean, I had to give up the outlet at the point so I only had, I was just doing a bit by the side just enough to sustain me and meanwhile at this time you know my husband was on his way out of the country he was he, his traveling arrangement was finalized it was coming here he was um, bound to go abroad you know I first tried to to fight for the business but no I couldn't I couldn't because coincidentally um, I got pregnant so my health you know I wasn't understanding my body and all that so I lost the will to fight I lost the will to just struggle to get the business back on on track and I was disappointed I was frustrated you know so anyway my business went for it so and apart from what um, I was doing a bit by the side I just had to support my husband in every way I could so that you know everything I was coming here to do would be successful so and that was um, how I zeroed my mind on you know of course relocation there was no going back anyway and then it actually made me to see the other part um, of what could happen you know like in those days in Nigeria I think things have actually um, improved much more now there's insurance now then there were I didn't if there was insurance for business I didn't have any knowledge of that so there was no insurance and so there was no um, soft spot for me to fall back on it crumbled it crumbled and it just opened my eyes to things that no so even if you think you are, you're rich or you're good now things can actually take um, the other way overnight so i zeroed my mind okay we're going out anyway so that was how my business crumbled so anyway all this while my husband was here and um it, got, it settled down after some time and you know by the time he settled down i had a baby and then um you know he started working and then by the time i finalized my own traveling arrangements and I came to join him uh, our baby was over a year just a bit over a year so we came and this is where the drama started from the drama serious drama because okay we left Nigeria I left Nigeria with my baby to come and join my husband in a very cold month I think it was November November right now okay is okay for me but then it was not okay because I was coming from the sun from Nigeria you know and I came into this country in November the cold was real the cold was real and uh, the, the first experience of uh, the cold I had was in Netherlands on my way here because we had a stopover um, we came by um, KLM Airlines and you know there was some drama maybe I'll make a, another video about that later but there was a bit of drama that we had to it was full of activities anyway we had to just um stay in netherlands overnight the airline booked a hotel for us and you know we had to stay overnight in that hotel and guess what apart from the cold the food was different in the hotel they booked for us um we had a whole table it was a buffet laid out for us that night 
and I could only see bald egg. Bald egg was the only thing I could know I was familiar with, you know. And my son also, I think he ate two bald eggs that night or something. And I also ate, I can't remember. Anyway, anyway, that is that. So then the language, you know, in Netherlands they spoke, um, they speak um, Dutch language. I didn't understand Dutch. They don't understand English. And, you know, I was coming from Nigeria where if you don't know the road, you ask. Or if you don't know the way, you ask people around you um, the, for the directions. Like, okay, so please, how can I get to this point B from point A? But here, that is actually, that actually applies to even this country, you know. I found that from Netherlands that, you know, there are maps. So you have to check the maps to know where you're going next anyway i escaped um the drama of the netherlands and we got here we got to dublin so thank god yeah we got here safely myself and my son and you know we met my husband um i'm also going to make <laughs> another video that would be like um i'll talk about you know the family reunion and all that <laughs> Um, that's going to be another video. I'm going to, I'm trying to make these things short So this video is short so that you know, it don't take too much of your time. So getting to Ireland um, My husband was living in the countryside So when he came to pick us from the airport, it took us straight to the countryside where he was living and Countryside is a bit different from Dublin the people although Irish the Irish people are Irish people but the, the, the countryside, um, the way they relate and they were relating to people is a bit different from... Dublin is a bit busier than the countryside. So in the countryside, people chatted a lot. People chat. I believe they still chat a lot, you know. People have more time for each other. So what happened was that on getting to the countryside, another culture shock was that, you know, sometimes we'll be strolling with my son in the evening and um you know or sometimes in the afternoon any time of the day we're strolling we met people on the way on the road and random strangers we just say hello how are you meanwhile they are also trying to get used to the brown skin because as at the time i came in like it just um some years ago over 10 years ago we were not many you know they, they, were, they, are, they were also trying to get used to us so you know they will be like hello they wanted to know us they want to know about us you know and so they'll be like how are you what's your name and they will tell us our name okay now let me give you an example let's say a mary meets us and when i say this mary is like a grandma age like maybe 70s who in nigeria especially as a yoruba girl i mean i'm from the southwest of nigeria i would never call um a 70 year old by name a very impossible no it is not possible so that's the way i grew up and now i would meet mary on the road and mary will be like how are you my name is mary and then mary will face my son a toddler and say hi young man how are you what's your name and i'll be telling the mary uh this is his name and she'll be like oh my name is mary still talking to my son and i'll face my son and say hi meet um grandma mary and Mary will be like, no, Mary is my name. And I'll be facing my son and saying, Grandma's name is Mary. And Mary will be like, no, call me Mary, please. Mary's just fine. Mary's okay. Okay, now, that was different for me. That was strange. That was almost impossible for me. Because I couldn't call, even me, I couldn't call Mary by name. How am I supposed to teach my son, a toddler, to call someone as old as his grandmother, mary by name I mean, that was totally strange to me so those are the kind of things that um were actually different and you know um so many things looking someone in the eyes looking at someone in the eyes um here shows confidence just shows um you're truthful you're confident when you look down here they say they you give the impression that you're not confident or that you're lying, you know, they say, you look at me in the face. That's when, you know, when they want to say someone is lying, they say, he can't even look at me in the face. But meanwhile, where I come from, like in Nigeria, in our culture, Yoruba culture, you don't look at an older person or a boss 
in the face it is totally wrong you know you are rude when you do that you are rude you are arrogant you're proud that's how it is seen so you see how the culture shock comes and how these things um, affect us anyway i'm going to round up now because i promised myself it will not be more than 10 minutes and this is already over 10 minutes i'm going to stop now i'm going to be um i just need you to just see the background of where i'm coming from and where we are now and the environment and the culture you know that could be contradictory and you know and how we're trying to fit things now and i believe this is part of the problems the African children have right now in, in Ireland because, you know, they're taught different things at home and this is their culture. This is their country. Most of them don't even know Nigeria. They don't know the countries they come from in Africa. They know Ireland. They see themselves as Irish. We are also trying to integrate as Irish because parenting here is totally back, different from back home. It is a totally different ball game. So let me round up. Thank you for listening. I'll be coming again later and we'll be dwelling on these things. So thank you. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. Thank you so much for your support. If you have anything you want me to talk about, please comment in the comment section or you send an email to me at uniqueforme at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>